Hi and welcome to this Onshape tutorial. Today we're going to look at the loft feature in Onshape and we're going to look at this third challenge in the bottom left hand corner. So we're going to look at today the loft and in particular we're going to look at the use of rails or guides to create complex designs. So at the bottom you've got extra tabs as you can see. So this one here gives us some extra links to resources and tutorials. This one here has got the links to the different activities if you click on the YouTube symbols. And what we've got here is a model or a part okay, to reference. So, so what we're going to have a go at is creating this okay, using loft and guides. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the plus, click on create part studio. After a few seconds the tab will appear at the bottom. I'm going to right click and rename this like so and then we're going to have a look at what we're going to create. So if we uh, look on the left hand side here we've got a number of different sketches, planes and so on. So the first thing we're going to do is create a sketch like this. So let's have a look at the dimensions. So it's 150 by 80. So if we go on to our tutorial tab, click sketch Click on this work plane here, the top one, N for normalize, and I'm going to draw out an ellipse, like so. I'm going to hover over this horizontal plane here so we get that nice and straight. I'm going to click and we're going to type in our dimensions. Now, if you type in a dimension like this and it's not correct, okay, so this is meant to be 80 by 150, remember you can always come back in and you can double click and update those dimensions. So that's the first sketch done. If we name that as sort of base profile, and then we can confirm that and save that sketch. So the next thing we need to do, if we have a look, and I just confirm that one. What I did next was I created a plane so if I just go to isometric and I go edit, I created an offset plane of 150 millimeters. So if we choose this plane here, go to planes, 150 millimeters, I'm going to make sure it's above rather than below the sketch. So that's below and that's above. And again, we could give this a name. So we can say, what can we call this? So top profile plane and confirm now. So you can see we've got this extra plane above now so we're going to create a sketch on here. So if we check the dimensions out, okay, so what I did is I've sketched these here, let's have a look, so top profile is Okay, 50 by 30. 50 by 30. So I'm going to go sketch again on here. I'm going to go ellipse. I'm going to go 50 by 30, like so. And we can give that a name so we can go top profile and save that. So what we're going to do next, which is a little bit more complex because we've got to add some different dimensions now. If we just zoom out of this and have a look, is that they've created some guides. So let's have a look at what I've got. So we've created a spine and then I've mirrored it over here. So we only have to create one side. It doesn't matter if we create it on the left or the right. Now what we're going to have a go at is creating this. So I need to see that I've got, okay, clearly the top point. I've got one, two, three, four, five points of a spine. So if I go to sketch, I'm going to sketch on this front work point. And what I'm going to do actually is there's, there's different ways in this, but I'm going to go up here 
and I'm going to click use and I'm going to use that sketch and that sketch and it will give me points then to make reference to and we could turn those into construction like so and I'm just going to normalize that and flatten it so now we've got these points to connect to so I'm going to come along now and add a spline so I'm going to go one two three four five and I'm going to click escape just to end that sketch like so so what we're going to do now is a bit of a time consuming process to add all these key dimensions you could grab these points and drag them so if we grab like this one here and also in this option here you can go spine point and then click on the spine to add an additional point so we're going to come and have a look at these dimensions so the first control handle point is 75 millimeters okay from the center and that's dimension reference there so it's going to be 14 so 14 from that bit 75 so I'm going to click on that and use this this one is 75 I'm going to click that and type in 14. So that, we've dimensioned that first control point now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of these and set it to these dimensions. Okay, so once you've gone through and dimensioned those, you will see that the spline will turn black. That means that it's fully defined. There's none of those points are going to move or you haven't dimensioned any of those points. So this is a good technique to use if you want to add full control to a spline. Okay, and especially if you're copying a part like you're doing and you're following mine, you will then be able to, you know, create it to a high level of accuracy. And it should, for example, once we apply the material, and we use this option down here to look at a mass. The two masses should meet between my design and yours, okay, if you dimension it correctly. So we've done that there. Now what we don't have to do is mess around, you know, creating this other side and dimension it. What we can do is if I just click escape from the dimension tool, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the mirror. So we're going to click a mirror and we're going to select the mirror, which is going to be this plane. I'm going to select that line there, that spine. And as you can see, it's now copied that onto the other side. If I change any of these dimensions, so I'll just change this one to that. You see the opposite side will change because I'm I'm using a mirror okay to create that. You could have a different um, spine on that side, but I want it to be symmetrical. So I've done that now and I'm gonna give this a name and I'm gonna give that the name of guides and I'm going to confirm that so if we have a look at what we've got and we just turn off these planes 
like so. When we turn that point off, I created. So as you can see now, we can go up to loft. And what I'm going to do is create a loft, a solid loft, new because it's the new, you know, I haven't created any other parts. So I'm going to click new. That's fine. Uh, profiles, it doesn't matter which order I select these in because I've only got two. So I'm going to go from bottom to top. If you see what that does now, it creates this sort of cone sort of shape because it's going the shortest distance from there to there. And like we've done in other videos or tutorials, you can change the conditions. So if you go normal to profile like that, you can then change the magnitude, okay, to determine that shape between the two, okay, sketches or profiles. What I'm going to do is to get rid of that and we have none and none. So what we're going to introduce now are guides. So guides. So what we're going to use is this guide here. And you'll what if you watch, and if I go that views better, you see this shape will then pull out into that. So we click on that. It pulls it out, but it does pull it on this one side. Okay. So what we want to do now is control the opposite side. So I've still got this selected and I could click on that one. And as you can see, okay, like magic, it's pulled that shape, okay, to these sort of arms of this mannequin sort of design, as you can see here. Paths, we could use a path if we we're going to create um, a design. And what I tend to do with paths is if I wanted, say, if I drew a sketch between the center of that shape there and the center of that one, I could use a path, for example, to go between those two in a sort of a a straight path or a slight angle. Guides are a little bit better to control sort of the outer shapes and the outer limits as you can see on here. And again you could go through the conditions to you know change the shape and how it blends between some of these but what I want to achieve is that and I'm just going to check yeah I've got solid and new and I can tick that. And there you go I've created that shape and the same as always, you can go in and uh, change your profile. So you can right click on them and you can go into edit and you can update these sizes. And once you update the sizes, okay, these are the shapes and profiles of things will change with it. Now, one thing I need to mention, and that is, okay, if we go to the guides, just go back into that sketch. Okay, it's very important that the start and the end of your guide, okay, intersect, okay, the two profiles. That's why, okay, I used this use and project. And what that does, it's converted that into a straight line. It's already snapped to that edge. The other option you could have used is when you're drawing this, is you select that point, okay, you select that edge of the profile. And if you go up to here, you can use pierce. And what that will do is essentially it sort of glues that point to that edge there. All right. So that's sort of a way you could do it as well. But what I did is I used this to sort of convert that ellipse into a straight line and it's automatically snapped to that. So if you do go through this process and it fails, then it's more than likely that this particular point here or any other points where it should be joined okay it's not joining there's either a gap or an overlap and it will not create okay the desired shape or come up with an error basically so that is a key takeaway from this tutorial okay your guides have got to intersect and got to snap between okay your profiles so what we're going to do now is I can right click on this and of course I can rename it and I'm going to go up to assign material we're going to give this a material, so we're going to go for ABS. So I'm going to click on here, type in ABS. If this wants to catch up, there we go. Confirm that. If we go to mass properties, okay. Now I'm going to click on mass properties, and what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to get a different value because just before that, if we look very closely at this. Okay, model here. So this is the one I've done before. I did have a shell, so it's got to be careful and add the shell. So two and a half millimeters. Okay, and the shell's going inwards. 
Okay, if I measured a mass then, obviously I would have a different mass because it's not hollow. So just be careful that you follow through with all the processes. So two and a half, not on the outside. Okay, it's on the inside. If I put it on the outside, I will get a different mass property. So let's try that again. So mass for that is 0.161. Okay, and we go to this one. And, ooh, we haven't got a material added. So we need to right click on this one. And here, sorry, assign material. So assign that same material. Must have forgot to add that. So ABS. There we go. So now, okay, we're all going to be able to make measure a mass once with applied a material again you've got 0 0.61 so there you go and if you didn't have 0 0.61 then you'd have to go back and what you'd have to check if we go back to the tutorial is one just check that shell dimension and make sure you've done it on the inside and then you'd have to go into say your sketches check those dimensions check the offset plane I did right at the beginning okay and also in your loft if you click on that remember i use none and none if you use another option it will deform the shape and therefore affect the mass properties thanks for watching and if you found this content helpful please click like and subscribe and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description i'll see you on the next one